Thank you so much. Just up front, I'm probably the worst dancer in the room, but I'm great to see these two tables doing extremely well earlier. So, yes, I've got two roles. On a daily basis, my first role is within Jazat, and as part of the G42 group, we are creating the digital backbone in the UAE. And how that manifests is that we are leading the discussion, the digital transformation narrative around artificial intelligence and bringing leading edge technology into the region. And you can see that in terms of what we've done with genomics. You can see that in terms of our involvement in the space program. And going from space, you can also see what we're doing in Abu Dhabi around autonomous vehicles. So we believe that artificial intelligence is going to play such a critical role in shaping this digital mandate in the UAE and across the Middle East as a GCC nation. My other role is I lead a team that cares about the trade between the UAE and South Africa. And what that means is that we get up each day and we care about how we can ultimately stimulate trade between these two major countries. The common denominator is technology. And I, I've got the privilege and I'm always humbled meeting with these people in the room in terms of the CIO community. And there's no debate when we look at your role, it is fundamentally at an all-time high when it comes to influence and impact. In the enterprise today, just to give you some data points that can maybe amplify how important your role is, if we rewind to 2012, if you look at the S&P 500, two out of 10 CEOs came from a CIO or technical background. Fast forward to today, 2022, six out of 10, a 3x multiple in terms of CIOs that ultimately on the S&P 500 are CEOs today. The other key data point is if you look at unicorns. Unicorns today in the startup community, in 2022 in February, we registered about 1,000 unicorns in the global economy. 77% of those were founded by technical CIOs or technical founders. It's truly amazing the technical revolution that's happening. Your peers, are also saying the same. If you ask your peers, 84% of them believe that you are the change maker of the business. You are essentially the catalyst that will help businesses to innovate and to transform. And I want to put to you that I think there are two major forces that underpin this transformation. And that's ultimately the demand and supply. Now, demand and supply for us in tech is not new. We know that we've seen significant convergence around how we need to serve a very diverse demand and how we can ultimately link that with the supply of technology. And we've seen this across multiple layers. If you think about our main methodologies, we've moved from milestone to agile to continuous improvement and delivery. From an architecture perspective, we've moved from monolithic architectures to microservices, application-led a type of architectures. And from an infrastructure point of view, we've moved from being on-prem, heavy assets in data centers, to as a service, all microservices, as is through cloud native type of solutions. So this is really this major impact. But just to give you an extra, uh, another version of this, is if you look at the left side, this is the complex demand that's happening in your world. The business is demanding a different mix of demand. They're asking you as businesses to become more relevant, more differentiated by using digital products and launching digital services. And you are rapidly working with business units to really shape that digital narrative, to make those digital services work and creating those digital services. What it means is that you are introducing a lot of technologies into your enterprise. And often these are complex technologies and the handoffs and the trade-offs of these technologies are not completely understood. It brings a lot of inertia, it brings a lot of complexity. And you sit with all these different technologies that you need to manage and operate within your enterprises to serve your customers better, to serve your business better, to increase the relevancy and differentiation. And then on the supply side, you've got an arsenal of technologies. As Stephen shared, these technologies are more software driven. They give you the promise that they're going to hyper automate your operations. They give you the promise that you'll ultimately use these machine learning technologies, software driven technologies to optimize this whole value stream in your organization. But the big shift, the big change, 
is how are you converging the IT architecture of the business with the business architecture of the business? And more CIOs, especially the ones on, in this room, know that value stream management, this concept of how do you ideate quickly and go into production, that is essentially where the value sits and this convergence between IT and business. So this is the shift. You are going to learn a lot about Digital First today. I think already this morning, a lot of golden nuggets around what Digital First is. I thought it may be worthwhile to spend some time on what Digital First is not. And firstly, it's not a single technology strategy. This is an alarm bell for you. When you see vendor lock-in, you must be concerned because it takes away optionality. Optionality is a fundamental strategic differentiator for you as you serve that complex demand that we talked about that's coming from the business. There's no one size fits all from a technology perspective. We'll talk about how you can really look at agile technologies in that space. You are also responsible for do it risk-free. You should not add in more complexity to the business by looking at all these technologies. And it's technology first is not going to be a winning strategy. You need to think about how you ultimately link the business outcomes and the business strategy as the catalyst of what you need to deliver. And here, once again, you've got access to technologies that can do that. But the philosophy here must be at the epicenter of what you do. And then finally, we spoke about partnerships this morning. I think Stephen mentioned it. But this is a key factor that has also changed in your role. How you look at partnerships traditionally was typically SLA-driven, it was financial, commercially driven, and typically what happened was you were ultimately looking at transactional partnerships. The partnerships that are created today to serve that complex demand of the business, these partnerships are based on equity. It's based on risk-free to you, but ultimately equity in terms of having skin in the game, which means that there's a consequence if we don't deliver the business outcome that's required, the digital services, the business or digital products that we need. So I want to talk about angels that briefly. So we've spoken about this digital demand. We've spoken about the digital services, the complexity of IT and business convergence. This is what angels are doing about it. When first of all, we lead with a philosophy of co-innovation. We've invested significantly in a digital practice that's focused on design thinking. And this ingenious practice really co-creates with you the business value that you need to have to serve that complex demand. Again, that complex demands around digital services, new products that can help you to increase your revenue, increase your operations, and ultimately your relevancy and differentiation. We lead with business outcomes. This is where these business outcomes are linked to technology outcomes, but at the epicenter, we need to ensure that these business value drivers span across that value chain. From the strategic value drivers around revenue, cost optimization, to risk in terms of the commercial constructs and the partners that you deal with. And then we link these business outcomes with a very rich technology stack. From a technology point of view, critical that we have that hybrid cloud, multi-cloud type of platform linked with security at protection fabric in terms of the application, the system, and the process, and ultimately giving you access to an application factory where you can really co-create with us the API integration that you need to deliver those uh, digital services. And this is all managed and operated in a service continuum, which allows you to consult and advise with us. So we shape that value, do the blueprint with you, and obviously deliver this and support it continuously. I want to give you a glimpse, though, in terms of what we believe is the big differentiator. Because again, over the next two days, you'll probably hear a lot about technology. But I want to leave you with how we do it, and give you the blueprint what I think is going to be important for you to really recognize. And that is the platform. The platform that brings the demand together with the supply. How do we do it? First of all, we've created a marketplace platform that's a digital infrastructure that allows you to capture the demand from the business, from your clients, and also from your partners. So the digital services that you co-create with them you can integrate into this digital platform. You can access it through a marketplace. And in this layer, we have all the service management and all the governance management to manage these service catalogs. This is critical because what often happens 
is that as a CIO, your backlog of features, your backlog of continuous improvements and development, that backlog typically gets bigger. In this model, we are able to serve those digital services, put it in a governance model, and truly really funnel and link the demand of the supply that the business is looking for. This taps then into a service broker layer where you are then able to have the API integration into that management structure. So not only are you then managing the product and the digital service catalog, you're now continuously putting API integration into it, managing and working with your vendors to once again amplify the products that you need to take to market. And then how you operate and manage it is also such a key factor to unlocking value. We know that there's no one single cloud that can serve this complex demand. And in our world, we've created a brokerage service that allows you to broker and manage and orchestrate all the cloud services and digital services that you need to deliver on the cloud infrastructure. And in our world, this means giving you that optionality, giving you the ability to use the right cloud for the service that you require, and being able to manage once again that service catalog and how you deliver it. And if you look at the cloud suppliers, G42, I think we spoke about it this morning, G42 allows you the data sovereignty and, 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 and the main digital dexterity that you need in the Middle East. You have access to Microsoft Azure, great when it comes to enterprise interlock, you want to integrate into a greater piece of your enterprise. We know Google, phenomenal when it comes to data analytics. If you've got product and digital services where you really need to integrate into the data layer. And AWS is phenomenal when it comes to e-commerce. But what Angelside is providing you is a platform to manage all the services and digital products that you need to create for your business and allowing you that optionality to manage it on any cloud that's fit for that product. So I wanted to end off by just showing you the art of the possible. Essentially, the people in this room are CIOs that are pioneering. You are pioneering the new businesses that are shaping the Middle East. I want to give you an example of how Interslat and G42 Group is partaking in that digital transformation. So part of this business design and digital businesses that we create is shaping these new industry businesses that are having a real impact and focus on what we have in the Middle East. Let's play with AI Flux. AI Flux is essentially a specialized platform business in the oil and gas industry that's focused on key products that helps with heavy equipment and asset management to first of all optimize their lifespan and essentially get more efficiency out of these products. It's essentially a digital twin business. And this is how we're using edge technologies, integrated with the platform to optimize essentially oil and gas operations. Malafi is changing the way we look at healthcare. It's a digital cloud exchange for healthcare where we're taking a digital record and essentially improving the patient life and experience around how they can have a digital record, no matter to which practitioner they're working with. So a practitioner in a safe and a channelized, controlled way can serve patients better. Hassan took 24 by 7 fire detection in the UAE, integrated into civil defense authority, and once again bringing together a digital edge with a platform that allows us to really solve a big, big business problem and health and safety issue within the UAE. And then finally, the Dawe is another example of how we are ultimately creating a virtual healthcare platform and taking it to a whole new level of how we leverage data, remote care from the patient using sensors and vital information, once again in a secure way to deliver a whole new healthcare and a whole new way of using platform businesses to deliver and solve big business problems. So this for me is essentially what we want and what we co-create with you. And this is a showcase of how you start with a business problem and ultimately solve big national issues by using technology and leading with a business philosophy. And I want to end with just how we are pioneering. Uh, when I left last night, I actually saw the 
future or divine future museum in its full glory. And I mentioned when I started, I've got two hats. My one hat is the Avengers, but my other hat is the South African Business Council. And I had the fortunate opportunity to meet the designer who ultimately designed the Dubai Future Museum. And we were speaking about Arabic transcripts that's on this building. And these transcripts, when they designed it, the whole purpose was to look from the outside in, to look at the vision, to look at pioneering. And the one caption there, also again, the transcripts are a combination of prayers, mantras, and so forth. But the one mantra there was taken from the shape. And it is around how we should pioneer each day. And how every day needs to be different than the last. So for us, the businesses that we've shown you, that's an example of how we're changing every single day. And the impact that technology can have on these type of businesses. So from an insight perspective, thank you so much. Great thanks to IDC as well. We're looking forward to the next few days. And we want to continue these conversations as we look at how we can ultimately leverage technology and business to provide this type of transformation. Thank you so much.